Jesse, uh, do you use any trading journal for your trades? Uh, if you so, what specific information and details do you typically record in your trading journal? So I use a paid journal called Tradezilla, and that just logs everything for you. So it gives you a calendar of all your trades. It like calculates all it for you, the percentages, the money you made, and then gives you a score, everything. But basically what I do is I always do my daily log of what I'm looking for in the market. And then I take a trade. I have like a checklist based on did I meet my rules here? And then I have the setup that it is. And then I just write notes and take a photo of it. So any day that I take a trade I need to go back to, I just drop that date in the calendar, press it, and I have the full analysis of the trade. So once again, I'll do the time of entry, time of exit, the date, I'll do the pair and the setup and have my checklist based on that same like, did I break my rules here? Did I keep my rules? Then I'll have a, an entry image. So right as I enter, screenshot, and then right as you exit, you also take a screenshot. So you have a before and after photo of the trade. Excellent. Excellent. And now you use a trading journal, you put it everything there. Do you put a uh, fundamental analysis in that trading journal or, uh, or uh, anything related to that? So mainly I don't trade fundamentals. It's just analytics and analysis. But for instance, if it was like a giant FOMC news or CPI, then I will mark that out there because sometimes I'll be running profit and the market will come back down and take me out there CPI or it'll take me out for, or take me for a giant win. Like it happened this, this month. So I'll just mark that and say the reason it was super volatile is because of this news event. And then I'm like logging that data to see over a long enough period of live trading. If there's something I have to switch up because I always, I always would do the major news events like the red folders on Forex factory, because at the end of the year, when you do your analysis, you can kind of get a sample size of if you need to tweak anything up. But I think those large news events hold the most weight on the market. Yes. Yes. Uh, I will just give you one example to see how you will <laughs> react as a trader. So imagine okay. that today is very, very important, um, very important news, mm -hmm. high impact news important fundamental analysis you need to create. It's not important so much for you, for you, but there is important news. And after the news, five, 10 minutes after the news, you have, for example, excellent results for US dollar, but okay. US dollar start to go down. And it's a completely, completely crazy situation. So you have one thing on the fundamental data and one thing on uh, technical data, what you will do, how you will react. Okay. So I always based off my back testing and my rules. So my rules say that to stay in the trade, I stay in the trade. Now, if the rules say, okay, which, which I don't really have, but if the rules say like for my lower time frame one, the rules say after 830, if the market is not volatile. You can trade it. So I wait until those news events happen to trade it. So on my one hour time frame trades, I don't care really about the news because they have a lower effect. And based on my back testing, the news is actually helping me out a lot. But based on 15 minute trading, it tends to become super volatile. You don't trade. So I always wait until after, but if I was in a trade during the 15 minute, I would have to just keep that trade running because. I execute it based on my rules and not based on emotion or getting out because of news events. So in that case scenario, I would have to just stick yeah. my rules and stay into my trade. Excellent. Excellent. So you have a uh, strictly rules and you follow them. It's a, uh, it's a beautiful, <laughs> it's it a beautiful. To. So,